Welcome to The Advocate on PLUS TV Africa, where we discuss thought-provoking topics in an atmosphere of seriousness, decisiveness, and laughter. Here we call a spade a spade as usual. Today, I'm going to be talking about how we can fix up our values as we approach um, 2023 elections. Elijah points out the lack of preparations for presidential experience, and Tolu Moyon is saying that Owning a PVC cannot be enough if you don't vote. So sit back and after this break, we're going to be here to dissect it all. Do stay with us. Let's fix up our values. I was recently conversing with my friend around the whole frenzy going on in the political sphere of Nigeria. She was really disappointed with the way our leaders in the political space are piloting the affairs of Nigeria. It's not rocket science. I mean, we've got appropriately skilled resources to deliver the future that Nigeria deserves. I personally believe that they know the technical know-how to get this done. So the big question is, why are they not doing this? This is why I'd always keep advocating for rebuilding our value system. The reality here is that the people we have on ground as leaders were once teenagers. What values did they build on? Someone said, we deserve the Nigeria we currently have. Well, in a weird way, that's not far from the truth if you think about it. Behavior determines results at any level. If we must create the new results, then we must re-engineer our value system, which determines behavior at a given level. The leaders that will pilot the affairs of Nigeria in the next 30 to, I mean, 50 years are probably still in primary schools. What kind of values are we instilling in these young chaps? The problem with having excellent skills is that it could be dangerous when combined with the wrong values. We need to fix our values. And it begins right at the family level. So today, I'm interestingly asking you know, my fellow advocates, can we begin to rethink our value system at the very fundamental level? <laughs> so I'll start with you. What, what, what do you think <laughs> of that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, so I think that you have touched on a very important, very significant, you know, um, very life-changing mm. you know, topic because um, Clearly, you're not going to go above your value system True. as a person, as a country, as a people, as a community, as anything. Um, and the question is, the current values that we have, where did we get them from? Mm. You know, I always say, you know, I always say we give too much credit to our leaders. Mm. <clears throat> you know, on one hand, these guys came from among us, yeah. right? And said so they didn't fall from heaven. Okay, so where did they get their value system from? And wherever they got it from, where did those people get it from? So we have to do a deep thinking and a deep cleansing True. and ask ourselves, you know, like you said, the leaders of tomorrow, you know, let's not talk about leaders of tomorrow. Hopefully, the leaders in 30 to 50 years, right, they're probably still in nursery school and primary school. Mm -hmm. Do we have any of those subjects ingrained into our curriculum that talks about values, right? Parents, like you said, also from the family level, you know, the parents have... In, in, in tandem with the schools? Do they have you know, anything that is value-driven? Because mm. again, you must ask yourself, if you as a parent have taught yourself good values, then the children get to the schools and they're teaching them something differently, then there's, there's a bit of a conflict. So there must be a, a general holistic you know, appraisal of the situation and then start to ingrain from, you know, from churches, mosques, religious organizations, to schools, to homes, and let's have a value system that we all believe in and start to work towards. Wow. So, Elijah, what do you think? I mean, in terms of um, how do you want to think about approaching this, rebuilding the value system? There's a part where I said um, we deserve the Nigerian leaders that we have. You know, so 
how can we begin to you know build like a new roadmap in terms of re-engineering value systems and what, what what can you say around that well you were right we deserve the nigeria we have now because the quality of leadership we have is a reflection of who the society or what the society has turned into you don't you can't plant a mango tree and expect to reap orange uh, from the fruits so those leaders in the hands of our fire of the political our government they are nigerians the same they live and dwell amongst us they are a product of the society and the values so if you tend them as corrupt or whatever they are it's what is in society. Corruption is everywhere. Yeah, it's the truth. Mm. When you go to uh, meet, I swear, some people on the road, they are too quick to give bribe to police. They are too quick to flaunt order, to, to break traffic rules and all these things. So if we want to talk about value, instilling positive value, we start with education. Uh, a lot of uh, persons are teaching primary and secondary schools. They are not there because they really love to teach. It's because of the situation in the country. Let's just take it. That's the available job, and they are not really who, doing their job who heartedly. And it's not even the curriculum per se. We have moral instruction. While I was in primary school, we did moral instruction. Did you do it? Yeah, well, I mean, we did it. I did it. I, did it. Have it. I, I have it. I, I think, think it's civic, civic education. Civic education. And they, now. they infuse some things to you too. Uh, trust it's, it's not the same thing. Uh, but, but, yeah. but if you go and to and the it's not just semantics. You know, there's a difference between civic education and moral instruction. They're, but they're but if you check this, two different the, things, if you actually, check the you know. content of the civic education, you still see some of there are some positive. I've gone through their stuff. It might not be the same name per se, but mm. they have some. These things are there. The problem is not head knowledge. The problem is heart knowledge, heart uh, heart response. So when you have young persons that are teaching young, these people are not qualified to be teachers. They just, oh, there is no job, let's just do it. They go, they don't even teach with their heart. Anything goes, after all, I'm just here to mark time and make mm -hmm. my time, get money and go. And it goes on like that, nobody mm. cares. They go to the society of a monetization of everything. You want to run, uh, go for anything, oh, how much will you pay me? You want to do, no, nobody's willing to volunteer to do something. No, this things matters a lot. Money, I want to do things at all costs, so cheat someone to gain for financial gain or, or self-aggrandizement and all that thing. So these are the problems, these are the loopholes. And that is why we have some persons in government, mismanaging government, government resources, and you are con condemning them. You can't condemn them when you are also like them. But let's even pick away from that money power. I wasn't chat with my friend and you know, so guys, what do we think? This whole debt, I mean, the delegates that were sent and we know, I mean, the dollars that rolled and shake hands and all of that. You know, someone asked me a question, Victor, these delegates know those that would deliver the Nigeria we're looking for. Why are they not, you know, you know, standing behind those people? Why are they standing behind those giving them, you know, the money? So, like, what can I mean? Again, I, it's just it's just very funny. Like we know, but we still would. Are we going to say that? Is it a conscious thing? Right? Is it a subconscious thing, or is it the level of moral decadence that had happened in terms of values? It's the three of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think that you, I mean, pretty much you've answered your own question. It's the three of them. Because I mean, on one hand, the fundamental issue with this, you know, delicate situation, is the system that's been designed. Once the system is faulty, mm. there's very little you can do to beat it. You know, I stayed up all night to watch that, uh, you know, the, the, the session. Yeah. People were like, why are And I said, you know, the truth is you can't change a system you don't understand. Mm. Exactly. You know, you can't beat a system you don't understand. So the first thing is we have to understand how the systems work. A lot of people don't even know how those things work. To be honest, it's the first time I'm actually sitting down to watch how the system of, you know, getting the flag bearer works. Mm. And if you look at systems, they're already flawed. And once a system is flawed, there's very little you can do to change it. True. So we must start by redesigning that system mm. or like I was going to advocate for, create a third force and you design a different system. And when you see the numbers, you see that things are possible. If you actually look at the numbers of voters and the numbers that these winners actually go home with, you find that if you create a different system, you can actually you know, disrupt that system. Mm. You know, so it's a systemic issue. Yeah. You know, it's not really a delegate issue. It's actually it's a, it's a systemic issue. It's a systemic yeah. issue. Yeah. Corruption has yeah. been systemized and institutionalized in Nigeria. Yeah. Mm. And this is 
And corruption is broad, though. It's not only when money exchange hands. Oh, yeah, you know, many of things. You know. But my point is, looking at that, this uh, what you were talking about, delegate, these guys, they know what they were doing. You say subconscious, yes, so subconsciously they were corrupt because they grew up in a corrupt society. Consciously, they made efforts and went there to make sure they get something because in their mind, they'll say, ah, after all, in this election, we could chop our own. And if you ask other, I may have interacted with other Nigerians, like some few persons I have around, they are not. They, they seem not to be interested in, in politics as if it's a way of, of being self-righteous or something. They talk about what's my business in politics. To them, they are being self-righteous. And some other people come for their own, I don't care, I beg, let them do what they want to do. I will go and open shop and sell my market. Anyhow, mm -hmm. they want to do, do. Yeah. If you don't try, if we don't claim ownership of Nigeria, who else will? Absolutely. Do you yeah. want... Uh, yeah. Is, is Kyle there, there, by any chance? No, I doubt. If not... Okay. Not, oh, okay. Okay. I mean, someone yeah. even made a tweet, okay. <laughs> a, a very funny tweet I saw, yeah. that, you know, um, Tinde Bakare spent um, 100 and... Um, 100 million. 100 million, uh, no, 100, and 30, 100 million and 30,000 naira. So, yeah. like, what, what are you saying? 100 million for the form and then 30,000 30, naira. million. No, no it's sorry. correct. It's 100 million. Hold on, million. Now, hold on. 100 million for the form, yeah. 30,000 naira for, for the book SMS. For the book SMS. Oh, okay. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't do what other yeah. people were doing. And someone had 100,000 for tickets. For tickets. He doesn't live in Abuja. Doesn't that reflect yeah. the values? These are young They're people. looking at the money. Yeah. Yeah. These are young people making jokes. I mean, so, yeah. it's funny, but it reflects the value system. Like yeah, we're so, talking so about. generally, I feel like, I mean, just to take on from what you know, Elijah said, I feel that there's a general sense in which the average Nigerian just feels as if <clears throat> politics is a is a means the, the highest bidder, wealth the highest money you know, giver and yeah. hmm. connection to that to any politician is just an opportunity for them to also you know harness the opportunity hmm. because if you think about it um let's not even start going to service because that's what police is supposed to be i mean you're supposed, as a leader or you know someone in government or in governance you should be a leader you should serve you're there to serve however it's been turned upside down if you get a chance to become anything, you know, uh, from the lowest councillor to chairman to, you know, House of Reps, House of Assembly, you know, senator, anything that you are in Nigeria, most of the time, in politics, is always an opportunity for you to make money. So if you think about that already, because that whole, there's a perception that has already been set, you know, it, it just, it just, once, like they say, once, you know, the, the use of a thing is not known, abuse is eminent. Mm. So already... We don't understand the idea of, of leadership and governance. So naturally, abuse is what's taking place. Until people start to understand what leadership is and what governance is, then, you know, we're, we've actually haven't started. Well, you know. the thing is, um, it's unfair for people to prize uh, positions in Nigeria and make it worthless by attaching money to it. Mm. That's why we are saying that the too much monetization politically. We know that political parties have to sell their form, maybe to generate some sorts of funds in sustaining the party, but you have to make it 100 million. I said before that, is it possible to make um, political presidential form almost free, but then it's difficult for you to have it if you don't meet some certain criteria? Mm. Can we do that? Yeah. I mean, so, so what, what happens, what I, I, my, op my opinion, I think that setting the form at that price already just cuts out a lot of people. That's what it does for you. Yeah. yeah I think there should have been other criteria to, yeah. you know beyond just money mm. that qualifies you you know so does it mean everybody that can afford 100 million i can then buy exactly. some position yeah you know so let's look at how it's done in senna claims what are the senna claims what, what are the things that qualify you to aspire for the you know highest position in the land and have a long list of things it's trainers you exactly. know put and mostly intellectual you know, a knowledge-based process. Intellectual exactly. bank, Ask you know. these people. I mean, when they give these guys two minutes to speak. Clean record. Do do you know, crap. You know, I mean, it's okay, crap. So if you can say in two minutes what your plan is for the economy, for education, for technology, for, for power, for, you know, renewable energy. I mean, those are things I expect to be hearing when they give people two minutes to talk. They're busy talking crap, more or less. So mm -hmm. it just goes to show, you know, the quality of people that were. And like I said the last time here, I said the, the quality of our candidates actually reflects a lot on us as a people. As a people. And, and you know. chiming on that really, because when, so when, um, when people see failure succeed, mm. right, they begin to see success as failure. As failure, exactly. So which is, this person that has almost next to nothing won. So that means I don't need to, this is my path of integrity, 
honesty, you know, being intellectual, having a clean record doesn't work in this ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So I need to throw this other part. I must have a track. So that means for me to actually even claim to that title, I must be well, you know, um, bred in the in the art of scheming people, in the art of, you know, laundering money. So I, let me even start laundering now so that <laughs> when I get to that level, my portfolio in money laundering <laughs> is robust. And, and these are the values we are now con subconsciously selling, which is now destroying the, the, the policy. And I think it's something that we need to really, really give yeah, up. Yeah, that, that, that's why I said I the last time that we can, can make this thing almost free. But then, just like you said, the process to get it will be difficult. Mm -hmm. We need to do more as a country. I all right, right. Uh, the future is all we can be, but I've not yet become, all we can do, but I've not yet done, all we can have, but don't yet possess. We need to go back and refix our values if we must create, you know, um, a better future for Nigeria. And it begins at the family level. Um, up next now is Elijah. Please do stay with us um, after the break. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.